Shalom, everyone. This is Ty Green. As we continue on with the passage of scripture within the Olivet Discourse, where the Lord Jesus Christ warns that the coming of the Son of Man will be like the days of Noah, and this is in Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 through 41, we find that one is taken and the other left. And then the question was asked by the disciples, where, Lord? And he said unto them, wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. In the last video, we studied how the gathering of these birds took place in the air. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 17 points out that same place where at the appearing of the Lord, the Bible says that those in Christ are caught up to meet the Lord in the air. As we get into the taken and the left behind, it's an understanding of a lot of folks out there that it's not a good thing to be taken and that you want to be left behind. We will get into Luke chapter 17, verses 34 through 37, and the book of Revelation chapter 19, verse 17 through 21. And this is where most with this viewpoint cite these scriptures. I want to encourage you all to get your Bibles out and let's review this together. I want you to know where this information is and how to break this down a bit more for your understanding as we need to understand that some things are lost in translation from the Hebrew and Greek into the English. This is not always the case, but it's very important to see the defined words within the passage of scripture as it is not always easy to follow. And we see this in regards to the epistles of Apostle Paul regarding the day of the Lord, the rapture of the church, etc. Let's pick it up at 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So let's get into the taken and the left behind. First, when we see this in the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 34 through 37, we see the one taken and the other left. Let's go right there. Verse 34. And the Lord says this, I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed and one shall be taken and the other left. Now, here we go with this translation, this loss. Keep in mind that this bed is called a kleine in the Greek. It's a couch to recline on at meals, like the way they were eating at the Last Supper. Remember how Simon Peter was leaning on Jesus? The way these were set up were usually three to a couch. Real quick, go to the book of John, chapter 13, start at verse 21. Real quick. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now, there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. 
Now, ever wonder how Simon Peter could lean on Jesus's bosom sitting up at the table? It's because they weren't sitting. They were reclining. This is a custom that the Jews also utilized, which was borrowed from the Greco-Roman triclinium for use at the banquets and feasts. It was usually three to a couch, a cline, a bed in which guests leaned diagonally on their left side. And you can read up more on this Jewish custom of reclining on Shabbat. Uh, the link will be in the box. So this is what these guys are doing in Luke chapter 17, verse 34. They are celebrating at a feast or banquet. They are reclining. So let's keep going. I tell you in that night, there shall be two men in one clean bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. A side note here is that this grinding is of wheat flour when we look at the root word. Uh, verse 36, two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, where Lord? And he said unto them, wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. So let's get into the Strong's Concordance and the Thayer Lexicon and see what these words mean. Let's begin with the word taken. And this is Strong's Concordance G3880. And remember this transliteration, paralabano. Remember this word because we're going to see it in a key verse in a moment. When we get to the Strong's definitions, we see to receive near, that is associate with oneself in any familiar or intimate act or relation. Now look at that root word G2983, to take up a thing, to be carried, to take upon oneself to take in order to carry away. You see that? Without the notion of violence, to remove, take away. To take what is one's own, to take to one's self, to make one's own, to claim, procure for one's self, to associate with oneself as companion, attendant, of that which, when taken, is not let go, to seize, to lay hold of. In the Thayer lexicon, we see this, to take to, to take with oneself, to join to oneself, an associate, a companion, not to reject, not to withhold obedience. Now, that's the word taken. And here's that key verse where this same word, paralabano, is used. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, says this in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, that word receive is the very same word paralabano as in the one taken. So the Lord says here, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you unto myself that where I am there, you may be also see that when the Lord comes again, he's going to take you those in Christ Jesus unto himself, that where he is, there we may be also. To be taken by the Lord is a good thing. When we looked at the word left, we see the opposite. Let's go. The word left, Strong's Concordance, G8, 
6.3. The translation here is afiemi. The Strong's definition says to send forth in various applications, cry, forgive, forsake, lay aside, leave, let, let alone, be, go, have, omit, put, send, away, remit, suffer, yield up. Look at this root word, G575, of separation, of a part from the whole. Where of a whole, some part is taken, and indeed one part is taken, and this one left. Here's more. Of any kind of separation of one thing from another, by which the union or fellowship of the two is destroyed. Wow. The Thayer lexicon says to send away to bid going away or depart of a husband divorcing his wife, to send forth, yield up, to expire, to let go, let alone, let be, to disregard, to leave. You guys getting this? Not to discuss now of teachers and writers and speakers, to omit, neglect, to let go, to give up a debt, Forgive to remit, to give up, keep no longer, to leave, go away from one in order to go to another place. Wow, if that doesn't say lots. To depart from anyone, to depart from one and leave him to himself so that all mutual claims are abandoned. Wow. To go away, leaving something behind. To leave one by not taking him as a companion. Now, we saw the opposite there in Paralabano. Uh, it also says to leave so that what is left may remain. Leave remaining. See? Left behind. And how does Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 describe the left behind? It's described as the remainder, the remnant of of her seed. And then it says, abandon, leave destitute. What we've just defined is the word taken and the word left. And we've seen the same pattern in Revelation chapter 12, where the woman has a man child that is caught up unto God into his throne. That child is taken and the remnant of her seed is left. These are in reference to those in the body of Christ taken in the harpazo, the rapture of the church and the folks left behind that become the tribulation saints. We see this in Revelation chapter 12, verse five and Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. We see the same pattern in the book of Isaiah chapter 66, verses seven and eight, the same in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verses 17 through 21, where the righteous are resurrected and are taken just before the day of the Lord. We see the resurrection in verse 19. And when we get to verse 20, we see this. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Taken away into thy chambers for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. That word come is Strong's Concordance word H3212. And amongst the definitions we see, take away and the word vanish. See that? In Noah's Ark, we see this. In Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous. 
before me in this generation, taken away into the ark and not left. That word come is H935. And amongst the definitions we see take in. In the case of Sodom and Gomorrah, the angels that rescued Lot and his family could not destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah until they were taken away out of the city and not left. Genesis 19 verse 22, we see haste thee, escape there, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. So they couldn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah until Lot and his family were taken away out of the city. In all these examples, we can see that the taken are taken away, taken in or taken up just before the judgments come upon the earth. The Lord gives this example of Noah and Lot in the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 26 through 29. But when we get to where the one is taken and the other left, some believe the taken are taken here to when the fowls of the air gather to eat the flesh. Clearly, it's at the end of of the tribulation. Look at this. Revelation chapter 19. Start at verse 17. An apostle John records this. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. And here's where these fowls of the air are gathered that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And here's how we know that this event happens at the end of the tribulation. Pick it up at verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. This is at the end of the tribulation. Let's keep reading verse 21. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And here we can see the fowls filled with their flesh. Yes, there are fowls of the air that gather to eat the flesh of men and the horses and so on. It's clear that this event occurs at the end of the tribulation. Yes, the Olivet Discourse was spoken to the Jews, but these were born again Jews. The part of the Jews that are represented by the flesh will see all those things outlined within the Olivet Discourse up to and including the second coming of Christ Jesus. The part of the Jews that are represented by the spirit because the believing Jews are in Christ, they won't see those things for they are part of the taken. The separation is clear. Just like we in Christ are separated amongst the Gentiles, those in Christ, Jew and Gentile, are taken. All others are left. The Olivet Discourse in Matthew, Mark and Luke is focused on the answering of when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming 
and of the end of the world spoken to the Jews with the focus on the ones that are part of the group that will become the tribulation saints, the fruit harvest, just like we see in Revelation chapter 12. It's about the Jews going into the 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not referring to the Jews that are part of the body of Christ, the taken in verse 5 of Revelation 12. So I pray that this study helps to clarify who the taken are and why. Yet the main thing is salvation through Jesus Christ, because we're on the breach of the instant that one is taken and the other left. Those that are taken have the seal of the Holy Spirit. It's an identifier of those in Christ unto the day of redemption when one is taken and the other left. Ephesians 4 and 30 says this, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. And this day of redemption is indeed a separation where the root word speaks of where of a whole some part is taken. See that? And of separation of a part from the whole. First John one and nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, every one of them. And he was buried and God raised him up on the third day. Just like scripture says, Jesus did that for us so that we can be saved, so that we can be taken and not left. Amen. So Romans chapter 10 verse 9 tells us how we can be saved. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. That's the Gentile, the non-Jew for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right. I will leave it here till we meet again. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom. Thank you.